for the King of Pop, Michael Jackson, for over a decade. Now, he has, uh, he, he was his right-hand man and has often seen pictured alongside him at public events, protecting him from the manic crowds. Following on from his role working for Jackson, he built a global martial arts empire worth over a hundred million pounds. He left school at 16 with a hundred pounds and no qualifications to become a lifeguard. But now he has schools around the world with over 120,000 students. His grandfather was an Irish weightlifting champion and was even picked for the Rome Olympics. Has anyone guessed who it might be? Of course it is. I'm delighted to say it's Michael Jackson's former security guard, Matt Fiddis. He joins me now. Hello, Matt. How are you doing, Matt? Nice to see you. You too. Wow, God. You just basically told my whole life story. Well, I know. I've talk, told them about that. What are we going to talk about? <laughs> no, we're going to talk about you because, OK, what was it like for you growing up? So, because at 16, you left school at 16, 100 quid, you made it into millions. But start me from the beginning. I was bullied at school. I mean, mm. that's where most people's story starts. They have some kind of pain that leaves them to have that ambition and drive. So I left 16, no qualifications. I did my best, but I didn't really have any subjects that I was interested in mm. other than wanted to teach people martial arts. So, yeah, I moved to North Devon. I got a job as a lifeguard working for £2.75 an hour. And I had this dream of starting my own martial arts business empire. Why? What was it about martial arts? Was it just the bullying or was there some, somebody in martial arts that, I mean, did you ever watch, what was that one? Monkey Magic. <laughs> no, that wasn't, they weren't doing. Do you ever remember, remember that, that one they were on the clouds, Monkey and Pigsy and all the characters in that? I don't remember that one. But I must be too old. I watched you. Bruce Lee and John <laughs> Van Damme, like the usual <laughs> stuff. Magic. I, I think what it was, I found something I was good at. Mm. That, that was the thing. At school, I was always being told, you're not good at this, you're not doing well at this, and your handwriting's not great, and so on. On. And I got to the point where I, I can't write. I can mm. sign my name and stuff, but it's not held my career back. Because if they assumed I was right-handed when I was, in fact, left-handed, mm. it was too late by that point. But really, it was just I was going in and getting praise. And I was good at something. So I just felt that's all I wanted to do. I didn't want to study subjects that weren't going to be relevant to me later on in life. And it hit me in a maths class. I was in the maths class and mm. they were teaching me for my GCS exams, how many different ways can you put a 50p into a phone box? Like 220p's and a 10. I thought, this is ridiculous. I need to get down and study what I want to study. So, yeah, I opened the business for £100. And, and a lot that, of belief. And that business was just teaching martial arts? Teaching martial arts. Mm -hmm. Started off twice a week in a little village called Braunton in North Devon, 10,000 people. And I was just doing things very differently to everyone now. So I was mm. just doing it's an educational system, not just sport. Um, teaching them not only self-defence, but using that as the hook. So everything that's not taught at schools that we teach in our martial arts system, like goal setting and determination, mm. confidence. You can do anything you want to be in life. It doesn't matter if you fail at school. You can, you can go out and hit your dreams. And all my millionaire, billionaire friends, that a lot of them haven't done well at school. Billionaire friends, come on, the name, give me some name drops. Oh, you've got some, some coming here, quite a few, don't you? Like Alfie Best, yeah, yeah. wonderful guy, him, yeah, come from nothing, him. great friend of mine. And there's a lot, lots of them have come on there. And of course, the most famous ones, I've been very privileged at such a young age to be part of this inner circle of oh. people. So when everyone else was going out drinking and nightclubs, I was hanging out with the biggest stars in the world and the wealthiest people in the world. I was very privileged that. From 17 years old, they took me under their wing. Well, that's, that's that saying, isn't it? Hang around with 10 tramps, you're the 11th one. But hang around with 10 billionaires, you're the 11th one. Exactly. I need to hang around with you. <laughs> you, you, want, you want to be the poorest one in the room. That's mm, what they say. I see. I definitely was back then. No so, doubt about it. So how did you manage to transform something that started off as 100 quid into this massive business that now is global and nets you millions? I had some great advisors. And um, the first one, who was on your show yesterday, Yuri Geller, mm. he was... I, I created a massive amount of media attention around what I did, because people weren't silly. They added up on the calculator how many members I had, and they realised I was making a million a year. So the, the media got hold of that, and it came to Yuri Geller's attention, and we became best friends. He's godfather to my daughter, Madison, and we became very close. And so we were someone who we can trust. I speak to him most days, even now. He's my longest standing friend, actually. I've mm. known him since I was 17, I believe. So he was very He's very positive. Mm. You can do anything you want to do. He, he kind of took me under his wing, made sure I... He pushed me to invest in property at a young age, and I hated him for it at the time. I love him for it now. He's a lot more than bending spoons, that mm. man. That man's a oh, genius. Yeah, yeah. Of he's course very he clever, very intelligent. Well, I love he fixed media. watches as well, actually, because we have people saying that their watches were actually, were actually fixed. So one lady sent a message in to tell us that his, his thing had actually worked. Yeah, yeah. And he also told me that nine people got in touch with him to say that it had worked as well. So that's incredible. Yeah, I've been all around the world with the guy, and... and um, it's incredible, people running down the street with spoons for him to bend. I've been in swimming pools with him where they've handed him stuff and uh, spoons to bend and things. But, yeah, he was a massive inspiration. It's more of his positive mindset mm. that 
he's uh, not so much appreciated in the UK, but once you get to know him, and you saw his incredible home mm. at 17 years old, that has an impact on you. And he allowed me in this circle of friends. Wow, incredible, wasn't that? How amazing is that? And of course, one of the big things that you're known for is being the bodyguard to Michael Jackson. Yeah. How did that come about, and what was that like? So Yuri's best friend was Michael Jackson. I didn't know that at the time I knew Yuri at the beginning. He, he kept it all confidential. I knew he was fam very famous friends and presidents were cool and people like that. But, um, yeah, he made that happen. He made that happen. He felt, I think, that Michael was getting people taking advantage of him. And mm. then that turned out to be true. Security companies and so forth were charging him 150000 a month. He couldn't answer the phone around him. Plus, he was a martial artist. He, Joseph Jackson, his dad, made sure... Was Michael Jackson into martial arts? I yeah, think. he puts it in his dances and stuff. Yeah, right? I didn't realise that is. Of course, even the moonwalk is sort of like a... Yeah. move. I don't know if that's going to help you in a self-defence situation. <laughs> yeah. well, I don't know, you're getting away from it. Backslide away. Probably better to turn around and run. <laughs> but no, Mike, Mike um, he was uh, already a black belt in Kung Fu. Joseph Jackson, his father, made sure the Jackson Five learnt martial arts and obviously it became hard for him. So he wanted to go and progress from black belt to the second degree. So, yeah, Yui knew I could trust him and then we became his, like, inner circle friends where we'd hang out with Mohammed Al-Fayed and go around his house for dinner and... They will shut Harris down for us and so forth. Really? And Mark Lester, who was the original Oliver Twist, is Michael's best friend. And he became the man who said to me, look, you're doing great now, but stop messing around. Franchise this thing around the world. And I said, no one's ever done that before in martial arts. And Michael said, that's exactly why you've got to do it. Look what I've achieved, you know. And he kept me accountable. So I had Yuri Geller in my ear pushing me for the property side and Michael pushing me to franchise and license my my businesses around the world, and that's exactly what happened. I see, because I had my own fitness business, but I think that's where it went wrong, because I couldn't be everywhere. <laughs> I couldn't no. be everywhere. So in the end, I employed other people, and it started to make more money, but the next stage should have been franchising. Interesting. Exactly, that's what happened to me. I had 120 mm. staff. Mm. The next stage, I had to expand it, but I didn't have that thinking, um, whereas the people I was hanging around mm. with did, and that, that was the big, big point to make that jump to the next level. Mm -mm. They don't teach you this stuff at school. No, they don't, do they? they but, you know, because Richard Sunak said that we should sort of be teaching more maths and stuff. Do you think that he was slightly onto something in that? We should be learning more about kind of business oh, and yeah, how I we should be doing. You know, I, I went to a parents' evening for my son recently and there was two criticisms, which was his handwriting was too small. Mm. And when he does the times table thing on the computer, yeah. he takes too long and he misses it. So I said, oh, I can solve that problem for you. Give him a calculator for the mathematics problem. That's solved because he's mm. going to... You know, he's only nine, ten years' time, he's going to be able, yeah. using, probably be able to say things and mm. it's working out. Well, we can, can't we, with well, devices now? Well, exactly, yeah. As far as the handwriting, give him a keyboard. You know, who writes letters anymore? It doesn't happen. Certainly in ten years' time, he won't. Just thinking he's updating. Mm -hmm. it's, teach people about finance and money and investing and leveraging mortgages and things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you, you couldn't write. I mean, you can write now, I presume. I can't. No, you wouldn't be able to understand it now. Oh, really? So, no. you, did you, can you, cause you, so you... Well, I can type and everything, yeah. But yeah. I can't, like, write a letter. I can understand it just about to myself. But I never had to. I just have to... Sign my name. So, did, so did, you, did you actually ever learn to write then, or you just didn't bother, Nate, because you went past the stage of actually learning to write? I, I could write, but just, it was so messy, the handwriting was so... You just couldn't understand it. I mean, it was, it was too late. I was 14 by that point, and they were trying to train me with my left hand, but... Plus, I wasn't interested. I just wanted to punch and get out there and kick and, and get my business started. I didn't want a job. Well, you talked also about your property that Uri encouraged you to buy stuff. So talk to me about your property portfolio, because I know it's one of the biggest... One of the biggest in the southwest of England. Yeah, I mean, he said to me at the beginning, you know, stop wasting all your money on Ferraris and stuff like that and buy houses. It's the greatest investment on earth. And one of the things he said to me is they're not going to build any more land. And so, That's a good point. Yeah. So when I was legally allowed to at 18, I started buying houses. And by the time I was 22, that made me financially able to not work if I wanted to. I could have retired. I had enough income coming in from the property to mm. not have to worry about about anything else but when you're around these people they're pushing you and you want to be crazy, like they are you want to be at yeah. their level of thinking they think when you get around the table they're not gossiping they're talking about the next idea how to change the world and it was a whole for me it was normal at the time that I didn't know any different you imagine trying to go back to your friends mm. and tell them what you've done the weekend no one's going to believe you they've been hanging around with Michael Jackson Britney Spears Muhammad Al-Fayed Britney Spears you met Yuri her Geller. as well. yeah yeah she seems great I mean I really like Britney yeah yeah she's wonderful that they're all good it's just when they're that famous it's Tough. Wow, must be so interesting to be huge, in that circle. When pressure. you're in there, do you in your mind go, crikey, all these, am I really in here? Do I, you ever get that sort of... Because no, people I, call it imposter syndrome, but I, I just think... It's only it's, once. We went... Um, we were with Michael Jackson in London, and he wanted to do something a little bit normal and escape the hotel. So we went out the back door, and we went to Yuri Geller's house. Mm. And on the way, we stopped off at a local pub 
in Sonnen. And that was a kind of a shock for everyone. And then um, we ordered a curry takeaway in delivery mm-hmm. and we watched that down and we watched a movie that was inspired by Yuri, Matrix. Was and it? Well, did there's it, a scene well, in there with the bending spoons. Ke- yeah. Keanu Reeves and all the... And I sat on the floor and we had David Blaine... What well, a security outside, because I was kind of his friend at first. And then David Blaine. Yuri Geller, Michael Jackson. I'm thinking, what, how the heck did I end up here? You know, what's... David Blaine. I wonder why. Didn't he do that thing over the Thames? That's right, yeah. That was all he, used to, he used to be around us quite a bit. Mm, interesting. It, loved, it, sort of interesting me. guy. And now you're married to a South African pop star. Monique. Yep. Yeah, does she still sing and do stuff? She, she still sings. Sing. She still releases albums. And she just released a single recently. And she's very supportive of what I do. I mean, we're very, very, very busy with what I've got going on. Plus, I've got six children. So six children. I've worked out what's causing that now, so it should calm down a bit. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I've got six children, so we're, we're busy, you know. We've got a lot going on, and she kind of manages me, and if it wasn't for her, then there's no way this whole Matt Fidesz machine empire would even have be you, happening. Have you guys been together all throughout, or have, or have you been divorced? No, I had a rehearsal wife first, okay. yeah, and we, we're on great terms. I've got three daughters with, with her, Madison Lola and Savannah, and, um, and I've got three children, with Monique, Zakira and Miela. So, yeah, but she, we, we treat them all the same. They don't know any difference. And we got on really well. And we see them, they've just been with us now, actually. So, yeah, she's hugely supportive. So what's so next? She understands entertainment. She understands yeah. the pressure that I can't... 11 o'clock at night, oh, I might have to react. Yeah. You know, that's the thing. My first wife didn't sign up for that. She mm-hmm. wanted to sign a bit more normal, I guess. No, no, but no, yeah. no, normal is boring. Normal is boring. And so what's next? Because I hear you've got some exciting news. I yeah. can't say, but give us a clue. I can't say much about it, but yeah. I know you've been a part of it. So myself and Boxercise, I've got the big brand, Boxercise and Kit Boxercise. We've got something big going on, which is about, it's going to be announced and, and, and drip fed. So over the next few days, there'll be some more information about that. Some big news about Matt Fidesz Martial Arts, MF Martial Arts and boxer size, and also for entrepreneurs, especially times like now. I want more entrepreneurs out there. So I've been very priv- privileged now with my, my career. So I launched something, it's just a simple website called uh, mf.club, www.mf.club. And it's just a simple subscription. And I'm trying to give back to entrepreneurs who are panicking right now and property developers who want to get out. Landlords who are scared because the interest rates are going up. Mm-hmm. And all the incredible lessons I've learned from Michael and everyone else who's been around me, in my 27-year career, I want to give back. So that's what I'm working on, MF.club, and then uh, sort of big with boxer size is happening. So you've got to come and train with me. I'll look, I'll look forward to that, Craggy. I'm rubbish now. I mean, it's all left me, all that stuff. Uh, but, Matt, so if we're running out of time, so a piece of advice to somebody who, uh, in their mind, thinks that they potentially, you know, they believe they can do something, they, they could be a billionaire, because I believe I'm going to be a billionaire. But what advice do you give to somebody who's looking to really do the best and make the most... You need to believe in what you do. First of all, find the niche that you're passionate about. If you're not passionate about, don't do it in the first place. You need, you're not going to get you up at 5, 6 a.m. in the morning, ready to go every day. And don't give up. You know, don't listen to the word you can't. You can do anything you want to do, as long as you dream it, believe it, and achieve it. They're the three keys, really, to, to making that happen. Whatever you focus on is what you get. You focus on being negative, that's how you're going to be. If you're going to be positive, it's going to be. You focus on being poor, you're going to be poor. You're not going to get out of that rut. You've got to focus on being financial stable. For me, what motivates me now is generational wealth. So I want to leave enough money for my children because I've got a lot of them. I've got a lot of grandchildren okay, one yeah. day. We don't have to worry about pandemics, lockdowns, energy, war, and so on. I want to do the best I can. So it's not about material things. It's, I think we all have a duty to look after and build generational wealth. So I'm hoping I can help people do that. Matt Fiddis, thank you very much. You're welcome. To talk to you. That is, of course, Matt Fiddis, former bodyguard to Michael Jackson and a entrepreneur. Really inspirational. Thank you so much, Matt.